Hello, I'm Chris Bartell at the Cascade Pacific Council Marketing Director, and today we're getting our webinar rolling here on Wednesday. Super excited about today. It's going to be really, really fun. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to run a virtual Pinewood Derby, and it's going to be really, I'm just really, really excited about this. We have two fantastic examples of how to do it live versus recorded and it's just going to be great so super excited to uh, to have you here today and uh, we'll answer all of your questions at the end as well so feel free to hang on to those and we'll go into a q a at the end we've got lots of great great tips but first of course we're going to jump into a little bit of a, a news update here uh, as to what's going on around the council so first of all just give me a few minutes here we'll run through these pretty quickly is if you didn't see this, we have a little campaign going. It's a letter writing campaign to our, our Oregon governor. Uh, it's a little letter writing campaign about keeping our camps open and it's not just our camps, but all camps. So if you feel so inclined to, to be involved with this and write a letter to, to our Oregon governor, that'd be fantastic. You can get all the information at cpcbsa.org slash open Oregon camps. And there are tools there. There's a how to all of that. And this is really to, uh, to really inspire and encourage uh, our, our governor to uh, make sure that the camps stay open, all of our camps stay open, not just ours, but all the other camps out there for kids, because we all know how important is that and that is for, for everybody. So, uh, so check that out. Also, just so you know, Oregon Scouts can meet in person. I know for our troop in Northeast Portland, we've been meeting for the last couple of weeks in a small cohort, and it's been so fantastic. It's just been Boy, the, the, the energy and the, the just excitement around all of it has just been fantastic. So check out all the rules, the latest and greatest at, uh, at cpcbsa.org slash COVID. And there you can download actually this meeting guide. It's a how-to step-by-step, really focused on, on Oregon because there, we're a little less locked down right now, but Washington as well and for Cub Scouts and Scouts BSA. And the real key too is that you have different options for meetings. So virtually, indoors, outdoors, just all the rules around that. And, and this has all been peer reviewed by our, our COVID safety task force who have been just fantastic uh, just a fantastic group of volunteers who have helped us through this whole this whole crazy last year that we've had. And you'll also see, you'll have a link there to the latest and greatest in the Oregon's uh, COVID risk levels for each county, because that is, it is important. And to know what your county is allowed to do in terms of having cohort sizes. So it really varies between eight, 10, and 12, uh, si 10 and 12 individuals, depending on what county you're in. So please uh, check that out again cpcbsa.org slash COVID for that. Uh, last, uh, another thing here, actually not quite lastly, but close to last year, is we have uh, Snack Attack is on. Many of you know about this. You can get lots of details about Snack Attack at cpcbsa.org slash Snack Attack, our spring fundraiser. And it's really, really fun. Some fun themes and people are having a lot of good, uh, really good time with this. So that's really fun. The next thing too, just in terms of some tools, if you haven't seen these already, Go to Start Camp for All page at cpcbsa.org slash Start Camp for All for all of you units out there who are doing Camp for All campaigns, and I'm sure you all are. So get lots of tools there as well and, and literally how to guide. Okay, here are a couple really exciting things, brand new uh, ad that I'm going to share with you. And I have my teammates here are going to give us a, a little spiel about two things. Are you ready? Some awesome spring break adventures uh, and advancement opportunities. One is called Cub Scout Craze, and the other is Merit Badge Madness. So I'm going to actually have invite Jenny Hickey here. She's going to talk to us about the fantastic, uh, the fantastic adventure that is Cub Scout Craze. So Jenny, go ahead and give us a give us your take on this. You've been super involved. This is really exciting. Yeah, it is really exciting. Uh, thank you, Chris. Hopefully, you can get out and enjoy some sunshine because in Portland, it's gorgeous today. But the Cub Scout Craze program is going to be a three-week program for Cub Scouts. It's going to run from March 25th to April 7th. There's going to be a class size limit of just 15 Cub Scouts per class, which means we're really going to get to interact with the kids, talk to them, and hear about their experience during the meeting or at the end of the meeting. Um, the classes will last about one hour each. And they may go a little longer or shorter depending on what the activity is. Each one is focused on a specific adventure or STEM topic. So it's really gonna be tailored to that Cub Scouts rank and level of learning. 
the classes are going to be just $5 for your first one. And that basic, or sorry, it's going to be $5 for your initial registration, which gets you the patch mm -hmm. on the screen. And then you'll pay an additional $5 for any of the classes you want to add. So you can really just build up whatever electives your scouts need. And all the supply list will be coming by Friday for each and every class. They will be simple supplies that you can find at home, things like paper, pens, uh, for the gizmos and gadgets or knock it down adventure, they're gonna be building things of a tower. So they could use Legos, empty milk jugs. We'll give you a couple different options for that. And that is all we have on Cub Scout Craze. Like I said, class size is limited though. So please be sure to register today. Classes are filling up. And with that, we also have some awesome programming for Scouts BSA, Merit Badge Madness, and I will turn it over to Matt for that. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff that Jenny said about Cub Scout Craze is similar for Merit Badge Madness, just on the Scout BSA side. Um, so we're doing 20 different merit badges, including all the ones listed on the screen there. And of course, many more because that's not a full list of 20. Um, and the classes, again, are going to be small, that kind of 10 to 20 aid or 10 to 20 scout range so that they're really focused and the instructors can really get down on an individual level and work with all of these scouts in these classes to make sure that it's a good quality merit badge class that they're getting into here. Uh, for Merit Badge Madness, the pricing is just a little bit different. It's going to be $10 for your first Merit Badge, which also includes that patch. Uh, and then it's $6 for any additional Merit Badges on there. And of course, as it says on the screen there, this is going to be running from March 10th or March 20th to April 10th. Um, so a little bit different time frame, a little bit wider window on that um, for the Merit Badge Madness. Yeah, and folks should really dive in because they are filling up quickly at last check. So you'll want to check both of these out at cpcbsa.org slash Cub Scout Craze and cpcbsa.org slash Merit Badge Madness. Those links will take you right to the pages there. You can register and all of that. And it's they are going to be great. Just a really fun array of activities and adventures and 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 merit badges and advancement for all for all the scouts. Really awesome. So thanks, Matt and Jenny, for joining us and giving us their take on that. That was awesome. Okay, next up for some other news items here. Tomorrow night, you're going to get an email on this as well, if you haven't received it already, is uh, our council roundtable and district breakout. So uh, please join us for that, especially all of you leaders and, and just parents and volunteers. If you've never been to any of these roundtables, it's been really, really great. Doing it virtually, ironically, has been really, really nice. We've had some great conversations and great breakouts. So please check that out. You have the links right there for your district roundtable, as well as our, our council opening roundtable event as well. And and on March 13th, there's the OA Virtual Rendezvous. March 18th, we have the Salem Leadership Luncheon. For those of you in Salem, you'll actually get an email on that here shortly as well this afternoon. So with all of the details and registration information there, it's going to be a really great celebration of scouts in the area. April 3rd and 10th is the Commissioner's College. April 17th is a Solve Spring Cleanup. So check that out too. April 29th is the Cascadia District Impact Hour as well. That's going to be really celebrating scouts in Portland, Lake Oswego area, area like that. And and then May 20th and 21st, we have the annual 19th annual Sporting Clay Shootout. Super awesome. You can see that on the website as well. And in July and August, we have NYLT. And then Powderhorn Training is in August. So there's some other items too. So please go to cpcbsa.org slash calendar, and you'll see really the latest and greatest there. We're, we're really working hard to keep that updated and fresh with all the new things that are going on. And you can also check out our Facebook page as well for those, for those events too. And lastly, but not least, is that, as I said before, Summer Camp Countdown is on its way. Almost, we're almost down to 100 days. Really excited about that. So we are opening. It's going to be great. And also there are opportunities for scouts to, actually kids, teens of uh, ages 15 and up to join camp staff. So if you know of any teenagers who seem like they might just be bored out of their skulls uh, this, uh, this uh, summer, feel free to tell them about camp staff. It's going to be fantastic. And so you can check that out at cpcbsa.org slash camp staff. All right, enough of my babbling as always. Took a little longer today, but so sorry about that. But lots going on. It's really exciting, isn't it? So today, our special webinar is how to run a virtual 
Pinewood Derby. I'm just super, super thankful and excited for the creativity of two folks you're going to meet here from PAC 254, we have Assistant Cubmaster Laura Nelson and PAC 383 Committee Chair Ray Collette. Uh, these, these folks, boy, their teams have just had a lot of fun. It's been a bit of work too, but guess what? We all get to learn from, from what they've done. So I'm super excited about that. We're going to dive in here and uh, actually, why don't you guys just uh, introduce yourself, Laura, let's have you go first and just say hi and maybe tell us a little bit about you. Hi, uh, my name's Laura Nelson. I'm the Assistant Cupmaster of PAC 254 over here in Southwest Portland uh, in the Multnomah Village area. We've got about 40-ish kids in our pack this year, um, and it's our first year with a lion den, which helped us with uh, nine additional kids. So we have nine kindergartners in our pack. Um, it's lovely. Um, <laughs> Me personally, um, I've been around uh, Cub Scouts for a while. My son, um, Henry, finished We Below's Two Arrows of Light last year. And this year I have uh, my second grade daughter, Dorothy, is in her second year of scouting um, as a wolf cub. And we're really proud of her. Um, and I've, I've had a few different roles. Um, I've been den leader off and on. Um, and then this year we had some big leadership changes. So um, I'm stepping up to uh, help fill some, basically anything that needs to be filled with our pack this year is kind of how it goes, right? Um, in real life, I, uh, I'm an elementary school math consultant and I train teachers in mathematics. And uh, this is what I do in my spare time. In all of your spare time. Yes, all of my yes. spare time. We all know how that goes, don't we? Uh, Ray, why don't you give us a little spiel about yourself as well? I, it's so funny because we were all sort of joking about yeah, we all wear kind of a couple of hats when it comes to our scout units, and that's just how, how it goes. But, but it's really fun to see when the kids get engaged and excited, and this is one way they're doing it. So, Ray, tell us a little, little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I am uh, I wear multiple hats in uh, PAC 383. I'm the committee chair. I'm the uh, the den leader for the Weeblos AOLs, um, and uh, I, I run their website and, and sh uh, online shopping cart system and uh, help with a dozen other things, including the Pinewood Derby. And uh, um, our, our pack's uh, 40 plus kids right now. We're, we're a little light on the, the younger kids at the moment, but uh, hoping to pick up a whole bunch more kids soon. Um, my personally, I've been, uh, been a scout since I was a youth in the eighties and, uh, spent, uh, the, all of that here in CPC and, uh, uh, my, uh, my outside of scouting, I'm a computer animator. I, I do, uh, computer animation for, uh, architects and animate and, uh, city planners and that sort of stuff. So I'm spending a lot of time making graphics. I have a feeling we're going to see some of your work, your yeah. handiwork today. <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> it's really great. Well, thank you both for joining us. It's just, it's just it's, I'm super excited to show everybody what you, you both have worked on here. And uh, I don't know how they do it. They just reel us in. And I'm a, I'm a scoutmaster as well. I'm a new scoutmaster at a troop in Northeast Portland. And, and so I wear a couple of those hats as well. Not so much. I've done the Pinewood Derby thing, but it's been a while. So I'm, I'm, this is really, really great. Okay. I'm going to hand the ball off to Laura here for first she's going to tell us a bit more about her pinewood derby virtual pinewood derby experience take it away laura all right so our derby was on january 24th uh what you're seeing right now was um just the the youtube thumbnail screen that i set so i could send the links out to everybody and we chose to do a live derby um for a couple different reasons one um I didn't want, I just wanted to get it over with. I was like, let's do it live. Let's let everybody watch. We had advertised the time for a long time. And so I felt like I just wanted to stick with that. Um, it's traditionally on a Sunday afternoon that we have it. Um, so what we did was we broadcast our Derby live uh, via YouTube live on our uh, PAC account. And I used a software called Streamlabs OBS. And that's actually um, gonna be in a slide later if you wanted to write it down, if that's something that you're interested in using. It's a free software um, and it allows you to kind of do a live broadcast and switch between scenes and different cameras. Um, and I've captured a few examples for you. Uh, we ended up using four cameras. Uh, you'll see in our setup, we had one at the end of the track, one at the top of the track held up with a, uh, 
a microphone boom mic, you know, the kind that goes out like that. We had basically duct taped it to this boom mic so it could see the cars at the top. Um, we had one separate, we had two announcers, our cup master, Scott Owen, was the other announcer and uh, we sat six feet apart. <laughs> we had a camera on him and then I just used my laptop camera on me because we found out that we were overloading my laptop with too many uh, external USB uh, cameras. And so um, those were the four cameras we had going. And then we used the Derby Dudes uh, for our race for ever and always. And what we ended up doing, I couldn't find a way to patch their computer into mine. I'm sure somebody smarter than me could have figured it out. But uh, what, what I ended up doing was I opened up a Zoom call and they screen shared their screen into my Zoom call window. And so when you see their um, race results, it's that's a zoom call on the rest of our screen with our live usb cameras it's a little fuzzy it it is what it is and that was kind of the beauty of the live event is that it just kind of whatever happened happened um as it as it happens with live events um so what i did is i actually put together a little four and four-ish minute video of kind of the highlights of what our derby looked like so you can get a sense of what that live derby looked like warts and all so i'm going to do a screen share here um stop you screen sharing and here we go okay so here's our little highlight reel for our video. All right, well, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and start with our flag ceremony, which is uh, brought to you today by Sammy and Alan Wren. Join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Everybody will get to see their car. We have a camera at the beginning of the track. We have a camera at the end of the track. We have cameras on us. All the action is going to be recorded. And then uh, we have the photo finish camera down here too, so you can see that as well. To give you an idea of what we are, where we yeah. are very exciting. So I want to take a second and explain uh, the way this screen works that you see. Up in red is our on deck. And these are the cars that are on deck getting ready to go. So you can see if your car is going to be the next one up. And then per hour, it doesn't matter who wins each heat. What matters is your own personal race time. Car set. Ready? Three, two, one, and go. Woo! All right. Those guys are zooming. They so are. Now, now this is a great example of uh, why it's so important that we um, keep the everybody's mileage separate or miles per hour separate because Chris Nelson who had an adult car he won that round but that's because he's an adult and he probably knows a lot more about making cars than the rest of us so good job Chris we love your car uh but uh you don't get to take away from a kid that's right, right? <laughs> here's, here's the next heat three two one go all right Great. Let's see. We've got Griffin Beck, first place in that one. Dorothy Nelson, second place. Woo! I have to give Good a little job. shout out. Come yeah, on. <laughs> Nelson there does resemble family. Yeah, there that, that one is my Nelson. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of Nelsons in our pack if you haven't figured that one out yet. But no relation. None of us are related, except for the yeah, parents the, and kids, parents right? And kids. Yeah. That's true. Ready? In three, two, one, go. Yay! Woo! Henry James, first place in that round, 221 miles per hour. We're going to your face for a second, so smile. Hi. Say hi. Smile well, behind your mask, Scott. I'm smiling. You can see it in my <laughs> eyes. Um, I'm going to take a second and show everybody our setup here, since we're taking a second. So there's our track. There's Scott. Hello. And here's our whole setup here. And there's the Derby dudes up there with Henry, and they're getting everything ready. Okay, we are going to be re racing Heat 14. So 
So tell me about this fundraiser. What okay, about? so the fundraiser is we have a couple anonymous donors to the PAC. And they have said, you know what? We have some money. We'd like to give to the PAC, but we want to challenge everybody to, uh, to meet our donation. So, oh, so um, it's like a matching donation. It's like a matching challenge, exactly. Okay. And um, these donors have put up fifteen hundred dollars together. Because yeah, because yeah. they realized that um, you know we didn't do any fundraising this year. We did not right. sell reeds in front of Thinker Toys. We did not ask you to go door to door to sell reeds. Um, place for the Lions is Judah McGrath. Second place for the Lions, Sammy Wren. And in first place, Henry James. Woohoo! Yay! Good job, Lions. So that was first place, Henry James. All right, next will be Tigers. Maybe you have to say it after me. <laughs> uh, third place, Carter McNichols with the tape. <laughs> oh, that's our duct tape. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Second place, Dylan Gertz. All right. <laughs> so as you guys can see, it was um, there were some mess ups. Uh, the award ceremony, um, we hadn't figured out how we were going to make that work quickly, and so it dragged on for a little bit and we we're trying to get the cars but um it was fun and one of the biggest takeaways and we'll we we will talk more about this in a little bit we've got kind of the lessons learned and the biggest tips and takeaways to share after we see rays as well but um one of the biggest um things was that uh um the the youtube live chat i enabled the chat and keeping that going was really fun um and you couldn't see it on the video now but it was it was on the live and it was super fun because people were typing in and cheering each other on um frankly i i had a couple people that i said please i need you to keep the chat going and and when it would get slow people would start cheering and make comments about my son's hair he was the one doing the runner and so there was like jokes the whole time about his hair length and it just it kind of brought everybody together and the other really cool thing is that we i noticed in the youtube views about 30 percent of our views came from after the derby which means people really appreciated being able to watch it later and i have a feeling we're actually going to do a live broadcast from here on out even when we can meet back in person um because it, it people loved it and it was stressful but now i know what to do differently so <laughs> Anyway, we'll go amazing. into details in a bit, but yeah. It's so amazing and live. I mean, we're, I do this every week, right? On the webinar. And so you're kind of winging it sometimes, but, uh -huh. but, and, but that's okay. That's the beauty of it. Hey, it's why people love live theater and concerts and everything else. It's as close as we get these days. Right. So that was really, and just the creativity and it seemed it, at least what I saw, it was really, it was really efficient. And, you know, sometimes it, in the, even in the live situation, it does drag on the awards and you're, you know, you're getting everything figured out and all of that. So it was how long, just out of curiosity, how long did the entire, uh, the entire race take or the entire derby take and how many kids, so how many scouts actually submitted cars ish? Um, okay. So th that's the other really amazing thing. And I don't know if it had to do with COVID or the way we did it this year, but um, and I, I wish I had our official uh, registration numbers. I think we have 40 scouts in the pack and 37 of them entered a car, which we've never had that wow. level. And then we actually had a couple scouts enter two cars. Um, so we had them choose one to race against their den. And then the other one we put in the, in the open class. Um, just so they didn't have, you know, twice as much uh, chance of, of winning an award within their den. Um, and then we had uh, adults and siblings as well. Um, and what we did is we labeled them adult and sibling, you may have seen on the, on the Derby Dude screen. And so that way um, we could really uh, make sure that kids knew how the technology was working to just record their time each time. Gotcha. But yeah, we had 37 out of 40. That's huge. That's really, really great. And so it was wow. a total, I think we, we raced a total of 45 cars with adults and with siblings. Um, and the whole thing took from flag ceremony to the end of our awkward award ceremony. I think it was an hour and 10 minutes. 
That's great. Wow. Yeah. wow. I mean, that's about, that's kind of what it takes. So yeah. that's really, that's impressive. Awesome. Well, Ray, let's have you take it away and show us your, uh, your derby a little bit different. Maybe give us a little bit of an idea of the setup because this was, you guys didn't do this live. So tell us kind of about how you went about this. Yeah, so um, we normally do a big live event, but uh, with with COVID and all, we, just, we uh, thought about, first of all, where we're going to put on a derby, and we didn't have access to the schools that we normally do, and so we, we reached out, and one of the parents uh, actually works uh, at a RV manufacturing plant in Dallas, in Dallas Oregon, down by Salem. And it's some 250,000 square foot facility, something like that. And and they they're normally closed on the weekend, so we were able to go down there. And we had, we had all weekend, but we ended up only using a, a Saturday to do this. We we got the track set up. That we had, I think it's seven or eight adults go down there, and uh, and we we were able to take our time. We weren't under the pressure of having kids showing up in an hour you know, the, like a normal race. And so we were able to, to take our time and troubleshoot any of the issues that we came up with. And we actually had a few issues where uh, we ended up not having the screws needed to even assemble the part of the track. And so we sent adults out to, to find the local hardware store and whatnot. But uh, we got the track assembled and had a lunch break and, and then went through and just did each heat and i had my the the cub master sitting at a table he had a he had a, a computer that was connecting into the uh the the race software so he could see what was coming up next and we had a mic on him so we were able to record he went ahead and just narrated every heat and uh and then uh, after everything was done, we broke it down, went home, and then I spent the next few days uh, editing that together into a video. And and uh, and here I'll show you what we got. So this is a a, a full four minute clip of some of the stuff. So here's the manufacturing facility. Welcome scouts, parents, and fans of the 2021 running of the Pinewood Derby for Pack 383. Before we get into our racing heats, we're gonna introduce each one of our drivers today. So we got Adam Brewood. He's in the Bear Den, a vehicle weighing 4.96 ounces and appears to be driven by Yoshi from the Nintendo games. Allison Vidic, she's in the Wolf Den. Her vehicle weighs an even five ounces. And her pink and purple mobile um, looks pretty sleek there with the uh, dome weight on there. We've got Xavier Hake in our Arrow of Light Den. His vehicle comes in an even five ounces. Got a very slick looking wood finished vehicle. Coming up, we're gonna have heat one, and in lane one, we're gonna be having Bear Scout Adam Brewood, lane two, Wolf Allison Vidic, lane three, Annabelle Hake, Wolf, Caden Shepard in lane four, a Wolf, Caden Collette. A Arrow of Light Scout in lane five, Micah Reutstein, a Lion Scout in lane six, Owen Sacha, a Bear in lane seven, and Tyler Hake, a Renegade entry in lane eight. And with that, let's get Heat One going. Okay. The winner of that heat, Annabelle Hake, Wolf. Second place, Addison Vidic. And third place, Micah Reutstein. And for heat two, in lane one, we have Annabelle Hake. In lane two, we have Ann Lampkin. 
In lane three, we have Aiden Reutstein. In lane four, we have Daniel Page. Lane five, Koa Markle. Lane six, Noah Wynn. Lane seven, Ralph Presida. And lane eight, Xavier Hake. And on your marks, get set, go. At the winners, Annabelle Hake is in lane one. Okay, lane, uh, sorry, heat 46, ready to go. Three, two, one. Heat 46 results looks like uh, taken by Xavier Hake in lane four. Heat 47 coming up. Tabitha Wynn, lane one. Z Tyler Hake, lane two. Xander Williams, lane three. Bethany Wynn, lane four. Holden Elzowski, lane five. Logan Miles, lane six. Maggie Bell, lane seven. And Ralph Presida in lane eight. Three, two, one. That is so great. I'm waiting for the ESPN sounder, you know. Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so I thought about putting some like sound effects in the background, but one of those things I didn't get to. But uh, yeah, wow. so what we did is uh, um, before the event, the week before the event, I set up a, a car collection here at my place. I had a little table and the scales and everything set up out in my front yard and the kids all came by and dropped off their cars and I uh, carefully stacked them into a big uh, uh, bubble wrap line tote and uh, I took pictures of every scout and every car and assembled those graphics. Uh, most of that was assembled ahead of time and then I was able to take the the, the the race software can dump out uh, spreadsheets of all of the heat data and so i was able to just feed that into my uh my um graphics tool uh at, i was using adobe after effects to do a lot of the, the graphics there and, and it was able to just read right out of that that table of data and generate all those graphics for me and and uh so that was the event Wow. And Im impressive. Both both in their own right. Just super impressive. I, it's <laughs> a lot more high tech than I than, than I recall. And it's only been a few years, but, uh, you know, it was we didn't have a time during you know, it was, hey, whoever won. Uh, I should have brought over. I have a hot dog mobile here that I made that it was a winner. But anyway, <laughs> I was one of the renegades. It was great. I was trying to beat the fastest scout, you know, from last yeah. year. Anyway, that's awesome. Okay, well, let's let's share a couple of the of the tips and things that that. Uh, let me pull up my screen here, and we'll just go through these. Whoops, just a second mm -hmm. here. I'll share my screen because we, uh, you guys, give us some great, just some great takeaways from it, which is which is just super great. So we'll go here. Give me a second. We'll skip through these, and whoop, one more here. There we go. And so going live, Laura, you had already mentioned a few things, but if you want to run through just some of these, you know, what was, what were the things you wish you would have done? What are the, <laughs> if somebody was to do this, uh, what would you recommend? Well, uh, one thing I just thought of listening to Ray is um, I wish we had found a place where we could have set up ahead of time. Uh, we used um, St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, which is actually not even affiliated with our pack. They're just always available available and happy to uh, let us use their gym for different things. Um, so we're super thankful for them. But, you know, we only had a, a short window of time that we could be there. And they had uh, very strict guidelines on how many people we could um, have in there. And so we didn't have a lot of time um, to set up and test the cameras. So one of the things that I did do is I kept trying to do test runs at home. I'd set up cameras on different ends of my house. That's how I learned that I was overrunning my um, machine with too many cameras. Um, but God, it would have been so nice, uh, like what Ray had to have the time to set up and really test the camera angles. And, you know, um, even things like I had my face in one corner and Scott's face in the other. 
but I kept turning to look at him and I should have switched where we were. So it looked like I was looking at him on screen. And these were the things that, you know, you realize later, oh, that was whatever, it still worked. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, one of the biggest stressors was making sure that the church had Wi-Fi. They ended up getting their IT guy in and he ran a router down to the gym just for us for this event um, from upstairs. There's this big cord coming down from the balcony. Like we're so appreciative of that. Um, so I got to test that, but I didn't have that test until a week ahead of time. Um, I used, like I mentioned before, a software called Streamlabs OBS. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software, so it's free. Um, and it let me switch between the scenes. I could actually, if anybody really wants to see, I can pull it up and show you what it looks like. But um, I just watched a bunch of YouTube tutorials on how to use it and made a lot of panicked phone calls to my nephew, who is a professional YouTuber and video editor. <laughs> and he talked me through uh, a lot of the stuff. Um, the chat bar, I mentioned that, keeping that lively was really important. Um, and I didn't mention this before, but it was in the video. Uh, we decided to not do any fundraisers this year and just kind of tried this matching campaign. And it was amazing. Like during the event, when we had that screen up for the fundraiser campaign, I think I think we got $450 pledged. Like I felt like I was on a pledge drive, right? During, during the live event itself. Um, and then things uh, trickled in after, as people watched it on video and sent it to grandparents and stuff. So that was that was really great. And we did meet our goal, by the way, if anybody was wondering. Um, and I mentioned also that a lot of our views came in after. So I, I really do think that um, this is going to be something we do. It might not be as, you know, we'll have the, the separate cam set up or whatever, um, but uh, it, it might be more of a static broadcast, but we're definitely going to continue this tradition if we can. Um, things that I really wanted to do um, was highlight each scout in their cars like Ray did. Um, we did a check-in. We only did a one-day check-in um, and people used Sign Up Genius uh, to schedule a 10-minute time to come by our race officials' houses. House. They had two uh, tables set up under canopies. It turned out to be a great day and kids came by every 10 minutes to, to register their cars. And I only realized that morning that, oh God, that's when I needed to be getting a picture of each kid. And the cars came to me, so I still could have done the cars, but I was too worried about getting all the logistics set up. I was like, no, I got to give myself grace on this. So I really wish I had done that. There was a few cars you didn't see in the, in the highlight reel, but um, there was a few cars that we actually brought up to the camera to show um, some of the detail. We had one sibling make a Lego car that we couldn't race because it didn't fit the track, but we gave him an honorable mention. And um, according to his mom, like he's still talking about it. Like, so I really wish we had done that for the kids to make it more personal and, and shown each car and been more uh, intentional about highlighting specific kids. Um, and same thing with that last bullet on there, being more consistent. Uh, we were just kind of talking and chatting and sometimes we'd announce the winners and sometimes we wouldn't and sometimes we said who was coming up and sometimes we didn't. Um, so if, knowing what we know now, I think, uh, you know, we could have one person be the, you know, the race official commentator and then one person kind of being the color commentator and, um, and been a little more uh, uh, efficient with that. But um, I really, I'm, I'm pleased in general that we even pulled it off. <laughs> but, you know, I, I saw Ray's not realizing his had been edited, thinking that was live. And I was like, oh my gosh, don't even have me on the webinar. <laughs> but then when I realized, you know, you can't compare them as apples and oranges. Um, and uh, if you've got the, the tech that you can do what Ray did, do it. Um, if you just want to get it over with, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. <laughs> Well, it really went off well. It's really like we were talking about live event. It's 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 tough, but it but it's fun. And I think that the energy that you brought there, I'm sure the kids, I'm sure the scouts and the parents, and you'd even mentioned that people from outside could watch it because they had the link to it as well. So that's a and that's just really really neat. And that, we did we did do it just so you know as a as a closed like a like only people who have the link can view it. So it's it even now it's not even on our public part of the Facebook pay or the, the um, YouTube channel. Like you have to have the link to view it. Uh, Cause we just, we didn't want it out, out, out there. So. Right. But it's great to, everybody can be invited in all the great. Yeah. They sent it to grandparents and everyone. I mean, the grandparents loved it. We had more grandparents watch than they've ever been able to watch before because 
crowded gym room. <laughs> so. Right. Exactly. Super awesome. Okay, Ray. So you had some takeaways too. Let's uh, let's dive into some of those because you obviously put a couple of hours into this, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so one of the things that uh, I thought was a great decision that the committee came up with is we normally spend a, a good chunk of a budget to, to rent a school gym and, and cater in some pizza or something like that. And they came up with this cool idea of, of buying a bunch of these frozen Costco pizzas and uh, the the night before our um, we presented this they ran drove around and delivered all those pizzas to everybody so uh, so while everybody's sitting there on the zoom meeting watching this they were all eating the same pizzas and they're all drinking the same soda pops and stuff and and so it was kind of like a movie night it, it was pretty fun so we were able to present this uh, at our regular monthly uh, uh pack meeting and uh um so one, some of the benefits that we got for uh um for doing the uh, uh doing it as a pre-recorded is we were able to basically edit past all of the technical snafus or or downtime um it, you, you get in front of a, a group of kids and and you start in like a couple of years ago we had a we had a an issue with the timing gate it kept misrecording the the cars as they came through and some of the parents you know got all concerned about uh how this was working and and we were we dove in and tried to, to diagnose what was going on and meanwhile all the kids got bored and started playing in the other corner of the gym and so you know the, it it detracted from from the whole experience for the kids that's what we got to remember this is for the kids and so by by doing it this way we were able to uh to to not cut all of that out and and compact this down the normally our pinewood derbies are a couple three hour events and i was able to get this down to 40 minutes and uh and and watching all the faces of our kids in the zoom meetings watching this video they were all 100 percent focused and entertained the entire time and and similar with with what laura was talking about uh, they were able to invite grandparents and friends to join in and and i've shared the the the, the youtube link of this to to them and they're they're resharing it out to their groups and so that we're getting lots of viewership. Um, but uh, one of the things you gotta do, and, and this, some of these tips apply for whether you're doing it live or pre-recorded is, is, uh, is definitely uh, um, get good lighting into your, into your scene so that the cameras can, can get it without a, without a whole lot of, you know, that dark noise that tends to appear. Uh, make sure you don't have shafts of light from a window just blowing out the scene sort of thing and then audio is is probably more important than most people realize that if you've got a if you if you've got somebody you're trying to pick up and trying to record their audio and you've got all this background noise you know an air conditioner running or other people talking that sort of thing it can really mess up a video and and so um, bag borrow or steal lapel mics or other kinds of mi dedicated microphones uh, get some cardioid mics that you can so you can have a nice beam of, of recording zone to, to tr pick up the, uh, the the narrators or or anybody that's that's pitching in with the audio and uh, and then and then when you're setting up a b before the event e even even though we had basically the entire day to set up and get going, uh, a lot of the stuff I did in the days and weeks before then of, of making sure that the software was working on my computer and communicating with the track, those kinds of things, working out all those bugs, um, that, that's, that's really, really important. Um, we use a software called DerbyNet. It's an open source software that can connect to about eight or ten different manufacturers of tracks and it's a fascinating piece of software it, the the main computer where the software runs has the direct link to the track to record the times but then you can link in other computers or tablets or phones and they can see 
live updates off of the system as to like what's coming up next, uh, what just happened, um, a bunch of other screens like that. And so I had a, a, a computer set up for some pickers that were staging the next heat. And so they could see a computer monitor that was displaying the, the next heat that was about to come up. So they knew which cars to select and and then, uh, and then my narrator, the the pack cub master, he saw a screen of what was actually going on. So he had the times popping up, and he could announce who won the race, even though he was um, forty feet away from the track. And uh, and then, um, uh, yeah. And my my. I guess my final comment is uh, if you think it's going to take an, an, an hour to set up your track, double that time. You're, you're, you're going to need it. <laughs> That's probably standard fare, I think. <laughs> no, and there's always something, a yeah. bolt missing. <laughs> you had a great point here, too. I didn't go to the next slide, but you said feed your crew. Oh, but... yes. <laughs> we went ahead and... Uh, the pack went ahead and paid uh you know 20 30 bucks to to have some pizzas delivered to the factory so we were able to take a break part way through and that lifted all of our spirits that's excellent we can call it craft services <laughs> yeah you gotta call craft services take care of all the uh all the edible all the uh all the food and beverage for everybody so that's awesome well that's really really great i, I was going to see if we had anybody had any questions i don't see any on facebook yet but uh, i think you really covered just such a fantastic array and uh of of options and ways to go about it and it's just that you're talking about the technology involved i'm thinking our track was wood <laughs> and, and that was only a couple of years ago. So you guys are already way fancier than, than, than we had it at our pack, but, uh, but it's really, really great. So here's the question. Would you, would you do it again? Is the, is the big question in terms of this, like Laurie, you'd actually mentioned that you're thinking that doing something live again would be, you know, would be really, you guys actually will do that again. Right. Yeah, I mean, using using the lessons that we learned this time, um, and uh, I, did, I I mentioned my nephew uh, before being a YouTuber. Uh, this entire thing came about in basically July or August when we knew that we weren't going to be able to have a, a live Pinewood Derby. I recruited him, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'll come over." He's an Eagle Scout from Astoria. He's like, "I'll come over. I'll do everything. Get you all set up." And then he goes and has a baby like five days before the Pinewood Derby. And we knew that was going to happen, like obviously, but um, so I had plenty of time to figure out how to do it on my own. Um, but, you know, Ray, I saw you got, you had like some real camera operators in there. And so that's something, if we do this again, uh, I'll probably be recruiting him to come because we, we, we were actually beg borrowing and steal, not stealing, begging and borrowing for anybody's <laughs> cameras. Um, and so we had all these just little webcams put everywhere. Um, the software allows me to turn the mic off on each camera. So that was one thing that helped us. Um, the only mics we had going were the um, directional one that I was using, which is this one. And then um, I think that was it. And so we did have some audio problems. I was like at the end at the award ceremony, you'll see me, I was holding the mic towards Scott to try to pick up his voice because we were trying to cut down on the rest of that gym echo. Um, and that's something that we could have solved had we had longer time um, to set up and test. But yeah, we'll definitely do it again, but I'll probably bring in uh, the big guns next time. <laughs> nice, nice. How about you, Ray? What are, you, what are your final thoughts in terms of doing it again? Or would you, because you had quite, you know, I know just from a video production standpoint, just shooting an hour's worth of video or just even a few interviews, you know, it's the post-production time that just takes so much time, even for something fairly fairly simple, but you had preloaded yeah. a bunch of a bunch of content, which is really, really smart. But but what would you sort of change differently, maybe to streamline time and things like that? Yeah, so uh, I had uh, the benefit of my brother happens to be a p professional videographer, and he brought a buddy along and 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 so we probably we we went overkill in a way we pr we had I think it was seven or eight cameras recording that event at the same time. So I ended up with this massive amount of footage. In fact, there's, uh, I, I probably only put into the video maybe 
five percent of all of the video that we recorded at that event um, it did give me the flexibility though of as i was editing it together i could pick a different set of camera views every heat that way you didn't just get bored with the same view and so that that was really handy but i probably spent probably three quarters of my editing time just going through the clips and flagging where the different heats were in each one of those clips and, and marking them so that when i got down to actually assembling the video then i could just type in heat three and it would pull up a list of all the videos that had heat three so i was able to, to streamline that a whole bunch but uh as far as doing this again in the future i think there's a good possibility that we might because <clears throat> partially because we had that that experience a couple of years ago that i mentioned where we had these technical snafus and and our 50 kids decided that this was really boring and they a lot of them went outside to play and others were you know just totally goofing off and not paying attention and and uh so having a, a condensed down version it, we did um miss the the excitement of having the kids actually there watching the event um but uh but on the on the zoom based call it, it definitely uh they, they definitely piped up and, and a lot of them were unmuting their mics at different times and and shouting different encouragements to each other and and uh so when we all get together you know this next year having a whole bunch of us in the gym maybe i'll figure out a way to set up a like a video projector or something like that and and sh just play them a, a pre-recorded heat i don't know it's really interesting and i hear you on the although when i'm really yearning for ray is some drone footage so you know it's like the football games if you could just have the drone flying across there we be... talked about that yeah <laughs> i'm sure you did, <laughs> you did. <laughs> one of the guys there was a is a, he's a certified drone faa certified drone pilot and he was like well i could bring that in but it would be so loud and huge but they've got these teeny little ones now these teeny little drones that you can fly indoors and we None of I'm us have you, a boom mic stand and duct tape does the same job. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did stick one of the GoPros on a car and we pushed it down the track. And and so it got a it, it wasn't an official heat. It was just a, a one of the tests. And so we got this footage of of the cars right out in front of the the, the camera racing down the track. And it was pretty cool. It, it didn't make it into the edit, but um, I'm I'm going to be posting that here soon. That's awesome. Well, you both have quite the, uh, the the trailers, the movie trailers, if you will, for next year. That's for sure. You've got all this great this great content. Well, if anyone, any of the attendees have any questions, feel free for you to raise your hand and we'll call on you. But uh, you guys have answered so many great, great questions. It's, this is really, I just love the creativity you've put into it, just doing it totally differently. But it's, boy, such a great way of going about it. Both, both methods were just so entertaining and awesome. And what I love is that it's sort of like how for us in Scouts BSA for our troop, just getting back together again and getting to see each other again. The, you, I feel like you have the same feel, the same tone and the same energy of being in the room together and making it really, really fun. And, and for those kids to be able to share with their friends, oh man, you got to come to Scouts. It's so great. And from a recruiting standpoint, that's one of the reasons, you know, Pinewood Derby is so great because you get to bring all the new kids in. And, and so it's always really fun. So this is such a you guys just did such a creative job of, of putting this all together. And I think it's just going to keep that energy high and, and, and re-energize people about, oh, wow, look at the things we can do, even though we've been sort of, you know, really shut down and, and everything, but being so creative and, and getting these kids together to do this and seeing how, how many of them actually made the cars. And it's just so, so great. So that's really, it's really inspiring. I hope everybody gets a, a ton out of this, getting some great comments and, and uh, everybody thinks it's amazing. So <laughs> that's, it really, it really is. Well, uh, no other questions doesn't look like, let me just double check on Facebook one more time here. It doesn't look like it. I think we're pretty, pretty good here. Just some great, uh, great comments and 
Anyway, so Ray and Laura, thank you so much for joining us this week. It's just been awesome, and I hope it's been inspiring and encouraging for everybody. We will put uh, a recording of this, so you'll see this and an audio version of this as well on the webinar um, section of our blog as well at cpcbsa.org slash webinars. So you'll see that there. We'll also put it in the Compass Points email newsletter that goes out tomorrow. So you'll have links to that and these videos and, and the tips and everything we'll actually put there on the webpage. So you'll see all of that. And, uh, and so if anybody else has, has any other tips that they've done for their virtual, if they've had any virtual Pinewood Derbies, boy, let us know because we'd love to share because uh, I think we're all just learning a ton from this. So anyway, well, thanks, Ray and Laura, for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And we will see everybody next week. Super excited for, uh, we'll actually tease it up here in Compass Points here. So I'll let you know what the topic is for next week uh, in that. So thanks again, Ray and Laura, and you guys have a fantastic week. Really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us today. And we will see you all next time. Thanks Thank so much. You. Bye.